Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast. Hope you guys are enjoying your week so far. I'm Angie Musgrove and today joined by Sam Mulner. Now don't worry guys, it's not another episode of Just Take Three. That will come out on Saturday and it's an absolute banger because we've just recorded it. Trust me, you're going to want to hear it on Saturday. But for now, we're going to talk about a former Newcastle United player who cannot stop scoring in the Premier League. And we're going to talk about him because Newcastle and I are going to have to keep him quiet on Sunday. You've probably guessed already, this episode is all about Chris Wood. And whether Newcastle and I might hold some regret that they sold him to Nottingham Forest, given his goal-scoring form of late. Sam, we've let you out of the cage, so to speak. You're coming to us for a second episode this week. Are you excited? Yeah, double bubble. Um, Why not, eh? Why not? So no, so it's always a fixture I look forward to. Um, Nottingham Forest, we've had a good record over the years, but I think this time around it's going to be a bit tougher than in previous seasons. Yeah, most certainly. I'm looking forward to the game to see how the likes of Tina Livramento and Lewis Hall go up against uh, Hudson and Doy and, and Anthony Alango as well. And we'll have the match preview with Gibbo tomorrow, which is Thursday, and the, the view from the opposition as well later in the week, because it is going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a fantastic game for the neutral. Um, you know, Forrest are up there, third in the Premier League, and it's not luck. It's just been really well coached and down to having a man who is just hitting the back of the net with nearly everything he fires towards it, Mr. Chris Wood. Let me just read through some stats, first of all, Sam, just to paint a picture of how good uh, Sam Wood... Sam Wood? Sam Wood? Sam Chris Wood. Wood. Sam Wood. Wood. <laughs> how good Chris Wood has been since joining Nottingham Forest. So he joined in January 2023 on loan. He hit one and seven, and then he was injured from March to the end of the season. 23-24, so last season, 15 goals in 35 appearances. And so far this season, eight goals in 10 Premier League appearances. So that's 24 in 52. That is an, a really good stat. He's just seemingly found form at Nottingham Forest. Yeah, he seems to have been around forever as well and, and played for everyone too. I mean, before we signed him when we did, I remember... Um... Back when we got relegated under Alan Shearer, we were linked to Chris Wood because that was going to be Alan's big signing to to fire us back up uh, to the Premier League. Um, that those were the rumours doing the rounds at the time, and he's been everywhere ever since. I think he did a good job for us. I think it was the the the, the right signing at the right time for us, considering where we were um, and who we were up against in um, trying to survive. But yeah, you can't argue with his record so far this season. It's absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, Forrest, uh, Nuno's got them very well drilled. They're all playing in their strongest positions, in their strongest role. So whilst we're still trying to muddle around a little bit and get the right combinations in midfield and attack and, you know, all round the pitch, basically, um, everyone knows what's expected of them in that Nottingham Forest side. And it's paying dividends so far. Hmm. It certainly is. And, I've got in touch with uh, a colleague who covers Nottingham Forest, runs a podcast covering uh, Forest, and I have just asked him, you know, how have Nottingham Forest got the best out of Chris Wood? Because we didn't see it at Newcastle United. He scored five goals in 39 games. He scored some important goals, and I never doubted his effort. And I always thought that he was really hard done by, not just with the criticism from some sections of the fan base, but also... By the way, Newcastle United played. They didn't play to his strengths and they were never going to. It, it, it didn't seem like an Eddie Howe signing at the time. And we'll get more into that in a moment. But the response I've got from a colleague here, he says, in short, Forrest have played towards strengths under Nuno. When he was signed, he was used as a big man up front with no real service. Under Nuno, they've got him the kind of service he thrives on thanks to have a genuine pace out wide and quality behind him in Morgan Gibbs White. And, thankfully for us, he says, Elliot Anderson. He feeds off high-quality crosses, not lumping it into the box. With confidence sky high, he scored different kinds of goals too, which probably goes back to his hat-trick at Newcastle last Christmas. What have you made of that there? Well, he needs to wind his neck in about his last point. Um, yeah, no, you can't argue with the rest of it, though. And he has scored some, some varying goals. Like the goal he scored the other week on the turn, neat finish in the bottom corner. Um, on the turn, as I say, there was exceptional. It really, really was. Um, 
yeah, every, every every team like that needs a spearhead up front. And, you know, he's always had goals in him. Um, he's a good finisher when when he gets the when he gets the service. Um, you're right, we didn't play to his strengths, but then again, was he one for the long term? No, he wasn't. He was never gonna get in the team ahead of Alexander Isaac. Isaac's still one of the best strikers and will always be well sought after whilst he's here, you know, in Europe. So I suppose the the regret may come down to the frustration surrounding Callum Wilson's lack of match fitness. Um, Asula, who oh, doesn't do anything for me, I'm sorry. Um, he, his time is on his side. He's still very raw and people were getting excited because he had a shot against Chelsea. Um, but he's never really looked like um, scoring, never got in, in, in any position to do that. Um, so that would be where the frustration comes down to. But at the end of the day, Chris Wood wants to be a first-choice striker somewhere. He was never going to get that long-term here, was he? No, he wasn't. But I go back to the point that I made just before I read the quote out there from my colleague. He didn't feel like an Eddie Howe signing. And at the time that he signed for Newcastle United, £25 million, pounds, January 2022, a lot of people said, is this more of a signing to damage a, a potential team that's going to survive ahead of us. And in the end, it probably did damage Burnley um, a lot more than maybe benefit Newcastle on the pitch. Again, no disservice to, to Chris Wood. But when I think about his time on Tyneside, I, I just felt like if you built your team around Chris Wood, he would score you a bag full of goals. And now people will say, well, that's never going to happen when Newcastle United will want to be. Champions League team, you know, a team in Europe is never going to build their team around Chris Wood. That being said, look at what Forrest are doing. They are giving him the service in which he thrives on. That's what my colleagues just said there. And I really felt that Newcastle I'd never give that to him. And that, in turn, heightened the criticism from quite a, a large section of the fan base. And I really did feel sorry for him um, when he when he left to go to Forrest. But we'll go right back to the start, Sam. As I say, January uh, 2022, he signed £25 million. And I remember thinking at the time, that is an eye-watering amount of money. He'd only scored three times for Burnley in the first half of that season, but we'll give him credit. He had hit double figures in each of the four seasons beforehand, so he was clearly quite at home in the Premier League. But again, Burnley, we know the way they play, especially under Sean Dyche. Get the ball in the box. Chris Wood's going to head it home. What was your initial thoughts when Newcastle signed him and for that amount of money? Uh, well, the money was a release clause, wasn't it? Um, when it was found out that twenty-five million was the price. I mean, look, it, it's all very well looking looking at where we are now and whatnot. But going back to that time, we were what bottom of the league. We knew we, everyone knew we had all this vast sums of money, and there would have been a lot of teams out there, especially in January, notoriously difficult transfer window to do business in, although we did fantastic business in that window with Bruno and Trippier coming in, um, as well as uh, Target on loan. And um, yeah, we did do some great business. But when you're buying a striker, you know, this is this is where proper fees are paid. And there would have been a lot of teams looking to take advantage. So when you have a striker of the in the mould of Chris Wood, where he has that release clause, which for a fee, which yes, may be a bit too high for a player that's that's renowned for playing for teams in in the bottom half of the Premier League, certainly towards the the relegation places in the Premier League, and then um, in the Championship as well. Uh, I, I actually thought it was fair enough because it was a double-edged sword for Burnley, wasn't it? They they not only lose their striker, but they've lost it to a team that are rivaling them for Premier League safety. So at the time, I, th I thought it was, despite the, the hefty hefty-ish fee, I thought it was a reasonably shrewd move, to be honest. And at the time, if I'm correct, Callum Wilson was out injured. Yeah. He was out injured from December the 27th and he was out injured for 125 days. So Newcastle United needed... We were desperate for someone. We were absolutely desperate. We were playing Maxi up in the centre, weren't we? Um, which doesn't is not playing to his strong suit at all, is it? And, yeah, we needed that 
um, focal point up front, no matter who it was, to to scratch and claw our way to to safety. Does the fact that I've just read that stat out about Callum Wilson out for 125 days, we were in desperate need for a striker. If I hadn't given the, you the date, Sam, you could have had three or four years to choose from where he's been out for a long period of time. And we're going off topic here slightly, but how are you cast United in this position again where they've got one man up front, they're in desperate need of, of, of backup because Callum Wilson, yet again, just can't perform? Well, yeah, it's not off topic, is it? It's 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 part of the part of the argument. Um, Chris Wood would have had football had he have stayed, not as regular as he would have liked, but he certainly would have had his fair share of minutes. Um, yes, different style, more more of a well, he's better in the air than than Isaac, isn't he? But that's probably the only kind of attribute where he's stronger than Isaac because he's just. An absolute worldy, despite um, his magnificent header at the weekend. Um, but that was more about the cross for me rather than the header itself. Um, but yeah, if, if Wood got that kind of service, um, which he did when he scored against Southampton for us and a couple of other vital, vital goals in there as well, a couple from the penalty spot, of course. But it, it, it's one of them where the frustration regarding Callum Wilson does play a huge, huge part because... We know how good Wilson is, and when he's fully fit and flying, he's he's a complete striker. Like before we signed him, I didn't appreciate how quick he was, how good he was in the air. He's he's an absolute complete Premier League centre forward. So it's hugely, hugely frustrating to be constantly in this situation. Um, I can understand some aspect, some elements of the fan base, you know, wanting to cut our losses with him and and sign someone new. I completely understand that. Um, and I can, uh, on the flip side, I can understand why Howe wants to keep him as well, um, because he has that, he, he retains that ability, doesn't he? So it's, it's such a catch twenty two. But you know, you can't you can't keep them all. You can't keep them all happy and. The fee we got for him was pretty reasonable enough. I mean, yes, we made a loss on him, but again, we would have made a hell of a lot of a bigger loss had we been relegated. Yeah. Well, the fee that Nottingham Forest paid for, for Chris Wood was rumoured to be £15 million. And I remember thinking at the time, that's a great bit of business because he'd only scored 5 and 39. He hadn't looked comfortable. You know, he didn't when he was so that I wasn't sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, what have you done? It wasn't an Andy Cavill moment or you know one of those where you say, please don't sell him. I thought, excellent bit of business. Never doubted his commitment or effort to the cause. Scored some important goals for Newcastle United that kept them up. The goal against Wolves, 1-0 win, sent Newcastle 10 points clear of the relegation zone. Thank you, Chris Wood, for your service. Good luck at Forest. Never yeah. did I ever think that he'd find this form and score, as we said, 24 and 52. Never did I think Forrest would be flying high in the Premier League table. And I guess when we say, you know, do will will Newcastle regret or do Newcastle United regret selling Chris Wood? My answer is no, simply because no one could have predicted this. He could have gone to Forrest and been an absolute flop as it is. He's found the form of his life. I think the the other point that comes from that question is the regret has to be that they've not replaced them yet. You know, we are, what are we, nearly two years, three years down the line? Well, two, they have. two years. Have they, though? Well, yes. Because, what, with Alexander Isaac, William Asula? With Asula, yeah. Have, have, um, I don't know. See, I don't. I don't agree with that at all. I don't think that is a replacement. Why? He's, the, he's the third striker, isn't he? Yeah. And, he's, and there is no point in getting, um, like, like a few weeks ago on, on Just Take Three, I mentioned about Garassi, who's now at Dortmund, but was available for 17 million release clause in the summer from Stuttgart. He was the second top scorer in uh, Bundesliga behind Harry Kane. Um, but were you to sign someone like Garassi, that would be, for me, instead of Callum Wilson. So Garassi would have come here to to challenge Alexander Isak, whereas um, we Chris Wood knew his place knew his role. Um, he, he joined the club with his eyes wide open. He's not stupid. Um, and and he knew full well that he would be a third-choice striker behind, you know, when Isaac came in and and uh, behind Callum Wilson also. So Asula would know that as well, but he has the benefit of time on his side. Um, 
he, he's not shown a lot yet. I, I know um, a couple of Derby fans who, where Sula spent time on loan earlier in his career, that they weren't overly enamoured with him. But, you know, how and uh, Tyndall must have seen something in him. Um, let's wait and see. I, I don't want to, I know, I know I said he does nothing for me, but I don't want to completely write him off because he's still a young player. Um, but, you know, we'll see. And it's, when everyone is fit, which is a rarity, yes, with, with Wilson, you know, you're not really ever going to see a Sula. And the same would have been with Chris Wood. I, I disagree with you on quite a few points there, if I'm being honest with you, Sam. It, first off, I think a Sula, for me, has shown glimpses to why Newcastle United spent so much money on him. I know you said, oh, people got excited because he, oh, he had a shot on goal. But, you know, the, the, the way he handled that situation and, and created that chance... But there were other things in that cameo. Emil Kraft did the legwork. Yeah, I know that. But the turn, he also had a few other moments in that game, which I thought, okay, you know, there is definitely something there. The other point I disagree with you on is the fact that they've replaced Chris Wood because they haven't. They have not replaced Chris Wood. You cannot argue, in in, in my view, that Sula is the replacement for Chris Wood if Eddie Howe doesn't trust Sula to, to play more than five minutes in a Premier League game. That's not a replacement. And we've seen that with the need for someone to come in and compete with Alexander Izak. You know, Newcastle United gambled on Callum Wilson's fitness and it's backfired. But they knew there was always a strong chance that was going to happen. So I totally disagree with you when you say they've they've replaced Chris Wood because they just haven't. They haven't you're not at being, all. You're not being realistic, though. You can't have three proper first-team strikers when you only play one up front. It's just, it doesn't work. You will not keep them all happy. It will cause disruption and tension within the squad. It, yeah, it's but... silly to think that would should be the case. So a third choice striker should always be the kind of young kid trying to break through. But you know, you, you can sell the move to a player. You know, I I I think bringing a arguing that Sula is the replacement for Chris Wood, it just doesn't line up for me because they're so vastly different in where they are in terms of their career and what we've been left with as a youngster that he how doesn't think is ready to play. And that is a detriment to what's happened to Newcastle United this season. Thankfully, Isaac's coming back. Goodness knows when Wilson will be back and he'll be able to stay fit. But I don't agree that they've replaced him. And quite a lot of people actually, Sam, um, have said that in the comments um, to a Twitter post that I put out this morning about Chris Wood. I said we were here filming this episode and I asked them, for their thoughts on Chris Wood. I asked them, is it just one of those things? You can't or... trust people, Andrew. I've been on Twitter this morning and there's lots of people supporting Donald Trump. You can't trust people. Let... Yeah, OK, it's a bad, bad day, but let's not get political because this is all about football. We don't want to go down that road. But let me just read you some of the responses. So John says, it's one thing letting go of a striker, but we still haven't replaced him. Sadly as well, we didn't play to his strengths. Forrest R and look what he's doing. Kyle says, performance-wise, he did all right for us. He was a good target man. He led the line well, got people in to support him. Goal-wise, not so much. I think he scored a penalty against Wolves at the top of my head. Don't remember any other goals, but I'll always be thankful uh, because he helped us stay up. Tommy says, had to play in a team that didn't and couldn't play to his strengths. St. Maximum and Almiron, both as inverted wingers, neither of whom could cross anyway. Got little service and never, never let us down. Crucially, unlike someone else, he was always virtually fit. Great backup option. Chutney makes the point, and this is a point I agree with. Wood and Anderson would not be guaranteed starters for us like they are for us, so they wouldn't be hitting the same form here. Tony says, and it's like he's been listening to you, Sam, one of those things, you can't keep them all. What was wrong, though, is the fact we never replaced him. So, actually, you'll agree with the first point, Sam. You'll disagree with this second point. Majority of fans were fooled by the end of the season form and fitness in 2022-23 of Wilson. A third striker was always needed and has been needed ever since Wood left, and it's not a Sula. Anything you want to come back with the points there? Um, the first one was fair enough. Um Obviously, the, the the yeah the Wolves penalty was probably the one he's most renowned for. Televised game, I think it was Friday night, wasn't it? And it was a big three points for us uh, in a game where we hadn't had the best of records in recent years. Um, the Southampton goal away from home was the one that um, I remember really, but that that goal was kind of drowned out of of remembrance really because it was when Bruno scored his first Newcastle goal and it was that cheeky back heel from from a set piece, but. Um, 
Yeah, he did. He did a lot of good, um, but you just. <sighs> If you were going to keep him, then you would have had to have seriously looked at Callum Wilson's place in the squad and then signed someone, like I say, in the ilk of a, of a grassy. But that ship has sailed. So, you know, there's... But just to be clear, you, you, you disagree with the likes of, of Tony and John there who say Newcastle haven't replaced them. That's the main issue. Well, they have, you... because, because Asula, whether you like it or not, is the third-choice striker. I'm not saying he's, he's, he's in the same mould as Chris Wood. He is the third-choice striker. Yes, Anthony Gordon still gets ahead of him because Asula's young and hasn't got that experience and he's not ready yet, he's raw. But he is classed as the third-choice striker, which was, you know, a similar situation to what Chris Wood um, was, uh, especially at the start of the, the following season because he left in the, in the January, didn't he? Hmm. Well, let us know in the comments on YouTube if you uh, disagree or agree with Sam. Have you cast that had replaced Chris Wood or not? Um, like we say, just in the absolute form of his life. And you, you you, mentioned that goal against Southampton, and that was really kind of playing to his strength. Good quality ball in the box from Shelby. Little glance well, head in, in the back of the net. It was kind of, it, it was what you wanted to see for Chris Wood getting that service into the box. Yeah, because um, in, in the the point was made in in those comments that you read out just that we again we never we never played to his strength it's not like Fraser and uh Almiron and Maxi were getting to the byline whipping crosses in that's not how we played it was much more um fluid get the the ball on the floor and pass your way through and score some neat goals yes Shelby could ping it in and I thought that worked quite well actually um with Shelby in the six and Bruno the right hand side of the three which is something I'm long campaigning for the, to see the return of. Um, and also you had Willock there with, with Joe Linton, the start of his midfield um, swan song, wasn't it? So, yeah, we didn't play to his strengths. He he was always a threat and an option, uh, apart from that horrendous miss in the FA Cup against Sheffield Wednesday, which um, the less said about the better. But, yeah, he, he had he have stayed, he'd still be getting moaned about. He'd still be getting moaned about, like, like let's, let's not pretend like the fan base really warmed to him and he was, like, really uh, enamoured with. He wasn't. He, he was kind of looked down upon and he was always a bit of a short-term solution. I think when we signed him, it was only on a two-and-a-half-year deal anyway. So, um, yeah, I don't want to get misty-eyed about him. He's, he's, he's a good, solid Premier League striker in a rich vein of form. Um, and he will be a tremendous threat on Sunday um, because I don't think we're the strongest at defending set pieces, and that's been an ongoing thing for a few years. I know we did well um, defending against Arsenal at the weekend, who are notoriously strong from set plays at the moment, but they never changed it up. They had one thing at the back post trying to flood the goalkeeper, and that was it. They didn't deviate from that plan, which I thought... For a team of of, of their um, skill set, was incredibly naive and um, yeah, ignorant. I, I thought they'd really drop the ball there. Um, but yeah, it'll be a threat. Elliot Anderson will be a threat. Um, Elliot missed his chance last season through the injury crisis, through getting injured himself. It's such a it's such a shame because I, I really I really believe in Elliot Anderson. Um, didn't obviously didn't want him to go. Um, circumstances dictated that, of course, with PSR, which is a whole separate issue altogether. Um, the right winger issue may well have been solved with Jan Kuba Minter as well, but you know, here we are. Um, it, it, it's one of them frustrating set of circumstances, and and Elliot, uh, Elliot Anderson and, and Chris Wood um, will be the biggest threats on Sunday. I expect touch wood that um, Hall and Livramento should be able to deal with the likes of Hudson and Doyle and Alanga. Well, that's going to be the, the, the key battle, isn't it? And we know um, that Alanga is on the radar of, of, of Newcastle United, so they'll be keeping a, a close just, eye just on him. nothing for me whatsoever. I know he doesn't, but I don't understand. I don't understand that. You know, I think he's very, very exciting. If it was is him, he? Yeah, I think he's really... I think he's, he's got a big future ahead of him and... I think if it if it's him or Brian and Birmo, Brian and Birmo would be my first choice, but I would not be disappointed if it was a Langer at all. I think him and he's so why did Man United sell him? But, but 
well, it's 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 the same thing when you look around other clubs. You know, the, the opportunity just was not there. You know, he, Anthony was never going to get sold. Uh, you know, ahead of Alanga. He could have played ahead of him though, couldn't he? But he just doesn't find him. It's like Diallo's not getting the chance at Manchester United. And he's he's going to be a big star. It's just one of those things. You know, it happens all the time. Diallo, they're not selling Diallo, and he is still getting a chance here and there. I think Alanga. I think you're doing him a disservice. But that's going to be the key battle on. Sunday. I would be disappointed but, if we signed a Langer. I think you're so mistaken. But but if the reported fifty million pound asking price from Burma is there, I, I think Brentford are, are cutting themselves short there. To be honest, I think he'd yeah. probably be worth a bit more than that. I agree. I agree. I mean, there's three or four players that Brentford could uh, demand sixty, seventy million for. They would have done really well. But we were digressing. But the point about Sunday, you're right. But I, I think. The, the wingers versus the full-backs is going to be key. And if Forrest can get the better of Livermento and Hall, which is easier said than done, then that obviously works in, in, in Wood's favour. I'm a little bit nervous about the battle between Wood, um, whether it be Cher or whether it be Byrne. I just think... Yeah, I am. You've got, you've, got, you've got the nightmare of Boxing Day from last year. Yeah. And then... You've also got the form of those two coming into this game. And look, Newcastle were really strong against Arsenal at the back. But Fabian Scher still had some really nervous moments. Dan Byrne looked much better than he has done in recent weeks. But I just think up against the most informed striker in the Premier League, up against the most informed team, maybe Liverpool have got more points on the board, but you watch the way Forrest are playing at the moment. Sky well, Forrest won at Anfield, so exactly. there you go. Like, I, I, there, is a, there is a fear for me in that battle, Chris Wood versus Dan Burner versus Fabian Scher, it's going to be a yeah. really interesting battle. I think that's a good point because it's something that's been playing on my mind for a few weeks now. I'm getting increasingly concerned about Fabian Scher's defensive um, defensive strength. Um, there are uh, quite a few. If I mean, if you haven't noticed before, you may well do now. We've mentioned it, but um, there's a few instances there and I think he loses his head every now and again as well because he's picked up a couple of really silly bookings for stupid, stupid tackles. Um, yeah, that is a concern. I think now, having done so well for so long coping without Sven Botman, who just is on, an, on another level, um, we're really starting to miss him now. Yeah, yeah, no more certainly. And, and as I mentioned on the Monday show, I think the need for a right-sided centre-back actually is quite up there on the list when I just yeah, watch well, Fabian Scher's form there. But, we, yeah, we, we um, just before we carry on, this episode is brought to you by NordVPN, and we offer you guys a very special discounted offer on your NordVPN plan. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash tune. A link, a link, a link will also give you four extra months on the two-year plan. There's no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the podcast episode description box. That's nordvpn.com forward slash tune. And uh, I have to say, it really does work because I got a notification uh, last week to say your details have been compromised via uh, a data leak. So you might want to go and change all your details. So I've done that and I've had nothing since. I've not been hacked into. So it was quite nice to get that notification and to be told... You better do something about it. And that's all thanks to NordVPN on the good old mobile phone because it's not just laptops and tablets, Sam. It's it's any device with a connection that you can get on. So one subscription gets you at 10 devices. So that's a, a bit of a bargain as well. So thanks, NordVPN, for sponsoring the podcast. Do hit that link in the podcast description box and secure your devices against the scammers and hackers and you'll get a host of other benefits as well. But yeah, Chris Wood, ladies and gents, what a form... He is finding his feet in the Premier League. He's in my fantasy team, Sam. Is he in yours? No, I didn't bother with a fantasy team this year because I always get to it. No, I always get to about this time of year and I forget to do it. So it's just I don't know. I'm just yeah, I didn't I didn't bother. But depending on how much he he cost, I I'm guessing Wood would be in the realms of about six, six point five, something like that. I'll tell you what, shall we have a little deeks? I'll have a little deep if you now. want. I bet Chris Wood uses NordVPN. Yeah, and well, if he does, he's using the right one. Yeah, uh, Chris Wood, £6.4 million. Pounds. There you go. I put him in for that Leicester game where he scored two um, a few weeks back. Had him in at the start of the season, took him out, put him back in, and he's uh, 
yeah, it, w- it turned out to be a very, very good uh, re uh, re signing for me. How would Chris Wood fit into this current Newcastle United side? Because as you mentioned, Isaac's goal against Arsenal. I mean, if Chris Wood was getting that sort of delivery, you'd be absolutely loving it. Yeah, um, where would he fit into this side? Uh, the he'd be on the bench. He just, well, I, I mean, I mean, yes, okay, but the the absence of Isaac from that Fulham game would have been felt a little less hard had Chris Wood been here and been available, yeah. And Isaac would be uh, even yeah, if he's fit, few, uh, yeah, he's getting um, pushed. Yes, um, Everton away could have been the difference between three points and one. Because Isaac did take a little while to to warm back up, didn't he? Yes, he's got three and three, but before then it was, um, with that minor minor toe injury as well, um, it was pretty underwhelming stuff from Isaac. So would definitely would have been chucked on with twenty twenty five minutes to play, wouldn't he? Uh, maybe even as a two up top with Isaac when he was available. But yeah, he would have had his chances this year. Would, would he have got what? What's he got? Eight eight goals in ten. Would yeah. he have got that? Would he have got that for us? No, absolutely not. He wouldn't have been on the pitch long enough to do to to achieve that. But um, he w- he would have had his moments. Um, we may be better off points wise had we had it had still had him in the squad. But I just, it was just never really a realistic thing. It was it was a signing that was always always for the short term of staying up and then you know we replace him with someone who is world class that, that will probably end up selling for about 150 million well there we go well ladies and gents i'll just ask sam the question once more will newcastle United have regretted selling chris wood to nottingham forest <laughs> i'll tell you sunday night <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's tricky because, again, that, for the way Forest play as well, is they play the four-two-three-one, which we can struggle against uh, and have done in the past. I mean, look at the way they played against us at, at St James's on Boxing Day. Is it impossible for us to play against that system? No, because we've we've overcome teams that have played that against us before, and we will again. But it's it's going to be tough. Um, we saw that in the in the Carabao Cup this season, where we we had uh, we needed a penalty shootout to to get past them, and they rested a lot of players that night. Um, even last season, we were maybe a touch fortunate to come away with all three points, but decent record there in recent years. So so fingers crossed, we um, we won't be ruining um, Wood and Anderson. Yeah, fingers crossed indeed. For what it's worth, I don't think Newcastle United will be regretting selling Chris Wood. I think at the time it looked like a good bit of business. They were never going to build a team around him. They were never going to build a team that plays to his strengths. And no one could have predicted the form in which he's found in the last couple of years. Disagree with Sam, though. I still think the biggest regret is that they haven't replaced him. But we'll agree to disagree on no, that. Okay. Well, no, you, no, you need to back up your claim. Actually, so who would, who, who, what should have, ha- what should have happened then? They should have gone and got a more senior, experienced pro that they could have turned to. Who in wants first team football? So but how it, are you going to give him that no, when it, there's Isaac and Wilson ahead of them? No, no, I get that, and I get that, but it's you know, that's not. It's not as black and white as that. You know, you can still sell a move two players, you know, come to Newcastle United. And I, and I also don't think Eddie Howe is the type of manager who 100% says, by the way, you're third choice. I know we look at it and think, Isaac fit, it's is but... course going to be first choice. I think Isaac would have benefited from a Chris Wood being here and pushing him and pushing him. Usu is not, going to, is not the man to push him right now. And Callum Wilson is just, well, he can't push him from the sickbed. So I just think Newcastle United... They still haven't replaced him. And again, you could argue that no one could have predicted Callum Wilson's injury. No one could have predicted Alexander's oh, Isaac's because. injury. And you could, yeah, okay. But okay, so if you say you could, that's where they've fallen down, you know, because yeah, they've allowed that, that's any where I agree. A situation where, where they haven't got a third track. So I don't think they've I don't think they've replaced him. I get what you're saying. How do you sell the move? Blah blah blah. blah. They've got a Sula. It's always going to be someone young. But that only works when you have a second striker who is always fit. And Newcastle haven't got that. 
So your Struggle. argument is we should have sold Wilson as well, but then you're left then in a position where strikers aren't cheap. Um, I know I said about Grass's release clause, but you know if you're competing against the likes of Dortmund to sign him, who knows? But uh, you know when you're selling someone for fifteen million, you can't then go and buy a striker that's better for fifteen twenty. Unless there's release clauses about, it. but I just think it's you're being unrealistic. Okay, okay. Well, we'll agree to disagree again. If you're watching on YouTube, get into the comments and let us know where you lie on this argument and the whole Chris Wood scenario. Would you like to have seen him stay in Newcastle United? Are you regretting his exit, or is it just one of those things? Thank you to Sam for popping on to the podcast. Thank you to you guys for watching and listening. Do the relevant sharing, hit thumbs up, subscribe to the podcast, leave us a rating and review. Click the NordVPN as well, link in the podcast description box for the very best offer on your NordVPN plan. And for myself and Sam, we will see you guys on Saturday for episode 15 of Just Take Three. And shall we Shall we give them a little bit of a... Um, oh, it's got a thumbs up there. There you go. The magical thumbs up on the screen has just appeared. And that's because it is a belt of an episode. It is headers. Because Alexander Isaac scored a belt against Arsenal, so we thought we'd look back on other fantastic headers scored by Newcastle United players. Watch out for that on Saturday. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you guys very soon. <laughs>